Uh, good morning, everyone. The topic for today is anesthesia and uh, pediatric surgery. So, uh, the uh, it will it is mainly divided uh, that as the anatomy and physiological differences uh, among pediatric and adult population, the pharmacology and dynamics of the drugs we use and monitoring uh, the pediatric patient during anesthesia period and main uh, the pain management and the special problems in neonatal anesthesia. So uh, the, the first uh, part is the anatomic uh, and physiological differences that is in the airway, the respiratory physiology, the renal and hepatic physiology and thermal regulation. So uh, in, while coming to airway, uh, if, if we consider the pediatric, the, the infant, the neonatal and the uh, adult population, there are many differences in anatomy, like uh, the tongue being a dispro disproportionately large in relation to the mouth, the uh, larynx is, uh, is at a higher level. Uh, in the case of a neonatal, it's almost at the C2 level. And while considering the uh, a child, uh, uh, infant or child population is around the C3 level. And if we go to the uh, adult population, it's almost at the C5 level. And the epiglottis being uh, much floppier, uh, U-shaped and la uh, longer. And uh, this differences uh, make uh, the maneuvers we do, the uh, co uh, complications associated with intubation, etc., different in pediatric population. So, uh, for example, the tongue being large, we, uh, we have, will have a difficulty during laryngoscopy, and there is also increased risk of uh, airway obstruction. And uh, in case of uh, the uh, nose and nasal passage, it is easily blocked with small amount of uh, secretions, and also uh, the uh, nasal intubation uh, is therefore not commonly uh, performed in pediatric population due to the high amount of secretion. And in case of the maneuvering, the chin, uh, uh, the, the chin, uh, in case of chin, uh, the, we uh, uh, neither hyperextend or hyperflex the patient. Uh, so uh, we, in general, keep a neutral position in, at the time of intubation. And this is the ideal airway position. And we uh, there is a combination of jaw and chin left, which is applied for, uh, 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 for uh, intubation. And the one of the major concern, uh, like before uh, uh, a surgery, is the anesthetist uh, saying URTI, the, the child have URTI. The one, one of the major uh, reason is that the uh, airway of the child is covered with loose pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which is susceptible to both inflammation and edema. And therefore, uh, it can be easily irritated and traumatized as uh, du uh, during, uh, uh, especially during a viral infection period or uh, when a tightly fitted tracheal tube is being inserted. So, and uh, we also know the funnel shaped airway, uh, uh, airway shape uh, uh, for the uh, infant population and uh, the key, uh, uh, and uh, which is different from the adult population. And the narrowest part for, uh, uh, of in case of infant, it is at the record cartilage level. At the same time for an, uh, an adult, it is at the glottis level. Now, coming to the respiratory physiology, the respiratory physiology in an infant, the ribs are horizontal and the ribs and cartilages are more pliable. So as a result, the, uh, the compliance of the thoracic cavity is much higher. Therefore, uh, there is a higher chance that the chest wall prolapses with more negative intrathoracic pressure. And uh, since the number of alveoli are comparatively less in case of uh, infant, the, uh, as a res resulting in the functional residual capacity being much lesser for uh, in this case of a child. Therefore, atelectasis are more common in case of a child. So if we look, uh, the minute ventilation is uh, uh, is much higher and the ratio of ventilation to the FRC is almost like two to three times higher in a unit. The clinical significance of this is that uh, an aesthetic uh, induction with volatile anesthetic agent should be faster in case of uh, 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 infant uh, or a child. And uh, also the, the uh, other significance of FRC being low is that uh, at a time of apnea or hypoventilation, there is a rapid drop of arterial oxygen levels in case of neonates. 
Now, one of the major concern we uh, come across is thermoregulation. Uh, the thermoregulation, uh, the reason for is that the large body surface area and uh, the inability of a child to sh uh, shiver at the first three months of age and uh, heat loss uh, uh, the whole body and mainly uh, including the head. So the steps that we take to prevent the various modes of heat loss uh, in uh, our D setting is uh, for the conduction loss, we use warming mattresses and also uh, maintaining a warm uh, OT temperature. And in case of the convection loss, we keep uh, right in, uh, during transport and also even during surgery, sometimes we keep the child in an incubator itself and uh, covering the infant with cotton roll or warming blanket. And for the evaporation loads, we warm the IV fluids we give, the betadine the, or the disinfectants we give, and the humidification of the inspired gases, uh, and also uh, using warm blankets. And radiation loss is uh, also by using an incubator during transport. The uh, renal and hepatic difference is that uh, during uh, the uh, neonatal and infant period, the uh, the uh, both renal and hepatic system are much immature, resulting in uh, the metabolism of the various drugs that we give uh, uh, being decreased. As a result, a much higher drug uh, uh, drugs will be there without clearance. The, this, uh, like for example, lower level of albumins and proteins uh, results in a much higher neonatal coagulopathy and also less drug, the drugs will be less bound to albumin, which results in higher drug levels in the blood. So uh, the fluid, uh, coming to the fluid balance, the fluid uh, ba replacing simply consists of replacing the deficit, which was in the NPO period and also the uh, providing a maintenance fluid during the surgery. So uh, it is mainly based on the uh, uh, holiday SEGA formula and uh, that is providing uh, 100 ml per kg per day for uh, the first 10 kgs and following 50 uh, ml per kg per day for the next 10 kgs and every uh, kg after that it is all 20 ml per kg per day and when while are following a rough estimate it is like 4 ml per kg for, for the 10 for the first 10 kgs and 2 ml per kg per are for the next 10 kgs and uh, 1 ml per kg for after 20 kgs so, uh, and for every 100 ml of fluid, as we know, we should provide 3 milliequivalents of sodium and 2 milliequivalents of uh, potassium and 2 milliequivalents of chloride along with the 5 gram of fluids. The uh, third space loss is one of the major concerns uh, uh, in, uh, in a surgical procedure. That is, uh, it should be first of all estimated and it depends on the surgery and the clinical re response to the uh, appropriate fluid uh, replacement. Uh, highest is uh, uh, the in uh, is in case of intra-abdominal procedures, and it is estimated around six to 10, 10 ml per kg per hour of uh, blood loss is there. And in, in case of intrathoracic surgery, it's like around four to seven ml per kg per hour. And uh, in case of neurosurgery and superficial surgeries, it's uh, around one to two ml per kg per hour. So, uh, to estimate it, uh, any blood loss in a pediatric population require a replacement. So, uh, replacement uh, depends on the patient's preoperative condition, uh, the, the patient's hemato preoperative hematocrit, and the nature of the surgery. So, uh, we calculate an allowable blood loss, which is, uh, the, which is calculated by this formula that is weighed into estimated blood volume into uh, the uh, starting hematocrit minus uh, the lowest acceptable hematocrit divided by the average hematocrit. So, based on this, uh, we replace, uh, we give a replacement. And this replacement, for example, uh, mainly if we are doing with ringer lactate, it's like 3 ml per 1 ml of the blood loss. And for uh, 1 ml of colloid solution can be used per 1 ml of blood loss. And 0.5 ml of blood cell concentrates can be used for 1 ml of blood loss. And these are the uh, rise in hematocrit which we see. And for example, for uh, him, uh, one unit of uh, PRBC transfusion is uh, suspect, usually provides a 2 to 3 uh, uh, two to three uh, grams of hemoglobin increase. Now, uh, regarding the NPO status of the child, it is considered uh, the uh, for, uh, for a solid meal, it's eight hours. 
and for a light meal it is six hours and light meal typically consists of a uh, uh, toast and clear liquids and uh, in, any fried or fatty goods are always are included in solid meals and in case of dress milk it is four hours but at the same time for non-human milk or a, any uh, infant formula it is six hours itself due to the fatty content percent in it and for clear fluids it's two hours now uh, the anesthetist uh, before taking a patient to the operating room they uh, in, ensures the pro following things are there that is a warm OT temperature with warming devices the laryngoscopes the tracheal tubes the airways the equipments uh, are all functioning uh, and standard monitor and tracks at appropriate uh, concentration as per weight so uh, before uh, taking a patient to the uh, uh, OT, a pre-medication is given. And this pre-medication has a role, uh, uh, does not have a role in less than six month population, but in other population, it has the role is still under debate uh, the uh, for which method to use. In Western places, the most common route preferred is oral. Here in, in general, we use the uh, intravenous route. And uh, the main role is that in the awake separation of the child uh, from the parent before induction. Basically, the anxiolysis is our primary objective. And the uh, our study recently have shown that the uh, a study, many studies have been done parallel. And one of this is the parental presence uh, on anxiety during induction of anesthesia uh, in children undergoing elective uh, daycare surgeries. Uh, it concluded that the uh, there is no much effect in it that is uh, the parental present even uh, in 2 to 15 years of age even the parental presence during induction also the the children had the same uh, range of anxiety uh, they had without parents being there so the pre medication uh, that we use a midazolamine a combination of midazolamine and ketamine and uh, at a dose of 0.1 mg per kg and 1 mg per kg respectively and uh, uh, this helps in 100 percentage successful separation and also 85 percentage easy mask induction the other uh, drugs like lycopralate and metoclopramide are used for decreasing the secretion and also in other uh, specific procedures like upper airway surgeries and cleft surgeries the methods of induction uh, of uh, anesthesia are in the inhalational induction, the intravenous induction, intramuscular induction, and rectal induction. Both intramuscular and rectal inductions are not practiced and are obsolete now. The uh, in case of inhalational induction, the main uh, advantage of inhalational induction is the relative ease and safety. And also, uh, it also avoids fear and pain of IV catheter placement, can be done in an awake or sedated or sitting up any uh, lying down position, easily reversible, and also maintains spontaneous ventilation, preferred in difficult airways and difficult IV access. The contraindication at the same time is that the most of the inhalational agents which we use along with the muscle relaxant like succin alcoholin is a uh, uh, triggering factor for malignant hypothermia, even though rare in uh, in our setting, but uh, uh, it is a contraindication for inhalational induction and also the muscular dystrophies which are a uh, risk factor for malignant hypothermia. This are also contraindication for inhalational induction. Along with uh, central uh, core diseases and child with full stomach or refusal to inhalational mode are also the other contraindications. So the drugs which are mainly used, the, the sole drug we use in general is sevoflurin. Uh, at the same time, uh, isoflurin are used in cases of uh, longer procedures, but uh, it is much not much preferred as like desflurin and halothonin due to the pungent order it have and the irritation it causes. So sevoflurin is a drug which we use uh, commonly along, which is uh, mixed with uh, 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 nitrogen dioxide, which is uh, which uh, helps in rapid onset of anxiolysis and sedation, uh, and also it speeds the rate of induction and also increases mass acceptance. Halothane was a drug which uh, which was uh, used earlier, which uh, five which helps in rapid induction, uh, but uh, not used nowadays. Used to sensitization of the myocardial depression and also halothane hepatitis. 
the uh, other root of induction is uh, intravenous induction in intravenous induction uh, it, it is mainly indicated when the child is in a full stomach that is uh, the procedures which require rapid sequence induction like in case of bowel obstruction and uh, unknown impure status concerns of malignant hyperthemia and also suspected uh, a difficult airway and cardiac condition that may uh, that will may not be tolerated by that may not tolerate the inhalational induction so uh, the main drug we use are propofol uh, and other drugs uh, in the line are thiopentone and etomidate. Uh, among uh, the propofol, the disadvantage is that the pain on injection and uh, also bradycardia, which is associated. And in case of thiopentone, the, it is uh, itself is a cardiac depressant and vasodilator. And uh, etomidate, even for a cardiac stable drug, it also has uh, side effects like adrenal uh, suppression and uh, the pain on injection and myoclonic movements. The main problems that we uh, uh, face during induction is one is desaturation, the laryngospasm, uh, bronchospasm, uh, bradycardia, and hypertension. So uh, now coming to the uh, endotracheal tubes which are being used. Uh, so uh, we usually calculate uh, with the following formula, 4 plus 1 by 4 into H for the calculating the size of the tube to use. So in a premature, uh, premature baby, the size is to be 2.5 and for a full term infant, it is 3, the size we use. And uh, the for as the age progresses, these are the following sizes there of the tubes that we use. And if we see uh, the till what distance the tube should be used uh, it's also have a, it also have formula that is age by 2 plus 12 or weight by 5 plus 12 or 3 into the uh, size of the tube this are uh, this can be used to determine the approximate uh, distance of insertion with the alveolar rates that is for a term infant it is like 9 it should the tube should be uh, placed between 9 to 10 uh, marking and for a uh, one year uh, child, it's between 11 to 12 and so on. So, uh, debate is still there between well, which uh, type of the tube to be used that is uncuffed or cuffed tubes. Uh, the reason being the shape of the airway in a child leading to for, for the for in case of a cuffed tube, uh, it uh, leading to uh, problems like stenosis, uh, for and uh, the uh, the favor, the things which are favored in case of cup tubes are decreased incidence of post -tube, uh, intubation of in, uh, intubation strider, decreased need for repeated laryngoscopy. It provides a better seal and decreased OT population, uh, OT pollution, and uh, also uh, it helps in accurate control of PCO2. At the same time, uncuffed tubes are uh, help. There is greater ease of suctioning, and also it have a, a greater internal diameter and also provide a, le a lower resistance and uh, lesser subglottic injuries there. The microcuff tubes, uh, uh, which are now uh, nowadays used, have uh, a high volume and low, these are high volume at the same with, with low, lower pressure cuffs, with uh, the cuff distally, the position of the cuff is made distally, and also the tracheal seal is at uh, lower pressure. And uh, the Cuff placement is, uh, in general, it gets placed below the subglottic level, and there is less risk of endobronchial or intralaryngeal uh, cuff position. So for monitoring, uh, during the anesthesia, we need continuous monitoring for the patient, and it can be invasive, uh, both invasive and non-invasive methods are used. For non-invasive, uh, uh, in non-invasive methods, uh, we use the cap, uh, Caffeinography, which is the gold standard for confirming the proper endotracheal uh, tube placement and the various uh, the shapes of the uh, uh, caffeinography uh, shows uh, the associated pathology. And uh, temperature monitoring, it's mainly done in oral or the nasal cavity is the most common site uh, for uh, temperature measurement. And in case of pulse oximetry, the uh, also uh, we need a continuous in it's a continuous non-invasive method at the same time some uh, invasive methods are also used in when uh, the the procedure is longer duration and based on the condition of the child like the intra-arterial catheter which uh, is placed uh, most common in the radial artery 
and the pulmonary atheter catheter catheters are rarely used uh, uh, because of the equalization of pressure of right and left arm and some multi lumen catheters are used Proceeding towards emergency delirium, this is a condition uh, in, uh, in which there is a dissociative state of consciousness in which the child, uh, child is incontrollable, irritable, uncompromising, and uncooperative, uh, uncooperative in the post-operative period. This uh, usually starts after 30 minutes of the conclusion of anesthesia and also lasts for around 30 minutes. Uh, this usually occurs because uh, preoperative uh, because of preoperative uh, anxiousness of the patient. The preventive measures are uh, preoperative angiolysis or uh, the use of we do not be volatile anesthetics and uh, we can give preemptive pre 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 analgesias just prior to the conclusion of anesthesia like ketamine, propofol. The, the, the theories behind emergency delirium are that there is uneven susceptibility of neurons to volatile anesthetics and there is low, low level activation of excitatory neurons by volatile anesthetics. Many drugs are recommended like propofol, ketamine, and uh, uh, medazolam. But the drug of choice for treatment of emergency delirium in case the post operation in uh, post operative care uh, shows features of emergency delirium, we can give dex metadopamine. <coughs> so, uh, this is uh, uh, what are the risk factors for laryngospasm? Laryngospasm is defined as a uh, defined as glottic closure caused by reflex constriction of intrinsic laryngeal muscles. The risk factors are young age, uh, infants and young children. There's history of reactive airway disease, recent URTA in the last two weeks, airway anomalies, airway surgeries, airway devices, possibly uh, uh, danger mask airways, uh, stimulating the glottis between the light phase of anesthesia, uh, secretions in the oropharynx, like uh, when there's blood, excess of saliva or gastric juice, inhaled anesthetic, inhaled anesthetics, more of them causes the laryngospasm. And when there is inexperienced anesthesiologist, anesthesiolo anesthesiolo the chances of laryngospasm increases. Coming to the uh, regional anesthesia, <coughs> the region, the concept of regional anesthesia has come up uh, so as to avoid the systemic side effects of uh, in, uh, um, of IV, IV and inhalation, inhalation agents, and also uh, so that the uh, amount of drug and the uh, amount of drug needed during the uh, surgical procedure uh, via via uh, IV or inhalation agent is reduced. The <coughs> uh, the uh, the cutaneous anesthesia, uh, the cutaneous anesthetic agents. Use which is more, uh, very commonly known as the EMDA. It is a combination of uh, lignocaine 2.5 percent plus, plus lignocaine 2.5 percent. It can be applied as a paste over the uh, paste over the side of uh, operating uh, operating side for around 60 minutes up to four hours and covered with a provided uh, covered with a uh, occlusive dressing. Uh -huh. uh, similarly, there is another uh, another product that is Ila Max that is a liposomal lignocaine of uh, four to five percent. Uh, another is a numbi stuff uh, uh, product. That uh, that in this uh, small amount of very uh, low low voltage current is uh, given for intradermal intradermal uh, ingestion of lignocaine and uh, epinephrine of one is to one lab. Then we have TAC uh, TAC product that com contains tetracaine, cocaine, and epinephrine for uh, uh, suturing or superficial lacerations as a cutaneous analgesic. Uh, then comes the infiltration anesthesia. The infiltration anesthesia is uh, uh, given so as, so as to perform uh, procedures uh, procedures locally. The drugs which are uh, used for infiltration anesthesia are bupivacaine, uh, levobupivacaine, lignocaine, prilocaine, and lopivacaine. Uh, <clears throat> the, the maximum recommended dose for these drugs are uh, if for bupivacaine and levobupivacaine is 3, uh, 3 mg per kg, lignocaine is 5 mg per kg, prilocaine is 7 mg per kg, <clears throat> lopivacaine is 4 mg per kg. Uh, telling about the uh, uh, knowing about the individual drugs, uh, 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 is a very good drug which produces deep analgesia. But the problem with uh, uh, problem with is that it, it has more of a motor effect rather than a sensory effect. So uh, uh, and it is short acting. So uh, so for, so compared to lignocaine, we prefer bupivacaine. The problem with bupivacaine is it is long acting. The good point about bupivacaine is long acting, but it has a side effect that has cardiac toxicity. Uh, uh, to uh, to overcome this uh, effect of radioactivity of bupivacaine, we have bupivacaine, but again, this comes at a cost. This this drug is more costly than bupivacaine. So, uh, in uh, this infiltration and essential drugs are very painful while injecting. So, the uh, uh, as per guidelines, the recommended uh, uh, what we can do these are acidic in nature. So, what we can do is for every 10 ml of uh, local anesthetic, 
we can use one one milliequivalent of uh, soda bicarb along with the uh, drug to inject so that a proper solution is made and the uh, and while infiltration the pain is comparatively less. And uh, uh, for uh, epinephrine can be added, a combination of epinephrine can be added along with lignocaine so that the, uh, there's vasoconstriction and there's little, uh, comparatively less blood loss while doing, some, doing the uh, superficial procedures. The wound infiltration during inguinal hernia procedures in children provides analgesia similar to those afforded by ileo-inguinal or ileo uh, nerve blocks or portal block for up to two to four hours after the procedure. So coming to the peripheral nerve or plexus blocks, uh, <clears throat> and these are uh, uh, these blocks are given for uh, procedures which uh, in which we uh, <laughs> the uh, iv agents or relational agents uh, uh, as we are uh, progressing towards minimally min 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 invasive surgery to provide uh, post op analgesia we can give this rectus shield block this in this and this block can also be used for performance of any uh, umbilical or paramental surgeries the site of uh, block is uh, midway between the umbilicus and the area on either sides the uh, uh, a bevel needle is inserted midway between the uh, umbilicus and the linear alba, and the drug is injected. Uh, the needle is inserted, and as we feel the pop-up pop sound, as we enter the uh, anterior rectus sheath, we can give a, give a pop -up, get a pop-up sound or a uh, give a feeling. There we uh, inject the drug, and the block is achieved. On this can be done on ipsilateral side, both sides. Similarly, uh, for uh, performance of uh, for doing uh, inguinal surgeries like inguinal hernia surgeries or orthopexies. This ileoinguinal or ileohypoplastic blocks are recommended. <clears throat> however, for uh, however, when we handle the viscera like testes or bobble, bobble in, when we when we are operating upon hernias, this block is not effective. For so for these conditions, we need a cordon block, which uh, which is recommended for an in, in, for inform like surgeries. Uh, for this procedure, uh, the site of injection is one to two centimeter medial and superior to the anterior superior iliac spine. And the uh, drug is uh, drug is uh, drug is administered. Uh, the needle is injected perpendicular to the skin, and the drug is uh, administered at a point when we give a pop, get a pop of feeling at the surface fascia. The, that is just anterior to the uh, uh, external lobby. Uh, similarly, is a uh, there is a there is a block penile there is penile block. This is this uh, penile block is, can be given for procedures like circumcision or distal hypospadias procedures also. In this uh, in penile block uh, at the base of the penis. Uh, on either side of the midline, uh, we we uh, we puncture with the bevel needle, and as we get a pop of sound, uh, when we when we puncture the box fascia, uh, the drug is injected on either side, and we can do the uh, procedure like circumcision and uh, dyslipospinous procedure. Uh, the quarter block, uh, the quarter block is given in at the uh, at the sacral uh, sacral thytus. Uh, this is given for uh, uh, children which are less than thirty kgs and for intramural procedures. The uh, uh, for uh, in, in the in, in post operative patients for uh, post op analgesia, the quarter block is given for uh, post op analgesia up to 24 hours. This is the effect lasts up to 24 hours. Coming to the epidural uh, anesthesia, the epidural anesthesia, anesthesia can be given by an epidural catheter. This can be given at either lumbar level, thoracic level, or even at the cervical level. The uh, drugs most commonly, which uh, most commonly use, uh, the drugs which can be used are bupivacaine, levobupivacaine, lignocaine, or bupivacaine along with opioids. However, because of side effects of opioids like proritis, nausea, urinary retention, and respiratory depression, these drugs are avoided. Uh, the most common drug used for epidural infusion in our settings is propivacaine. Coming to the pain management in uh, pediatric population, uh, appropriately titrated analgesia not only relieves pain and uh, reduces distress, but also allows more thorough and accurate evaluation. There are some pain, uh, there are some pain sports. That is n pass mode, which comprises neurotal pain, agitation, and sedation, uh, sedation scale. This can be also done uh, used in intubated and extremely premature child uh, from age 0 to 100, 100 age. For child between 5 to 16 age, a plaque scoring is given, which comprises a uh, uh, look of face, legs, leg act, legs, activity, cry, and consolability. Uh, uh, similarly, there is an analog, analog pain, uh, pain score for uh, school aged children. This uh, comprises of number from 0 to 10, and the ch children can themselves recognize that what kind of pain they are having, and they can uh, we can have a subjective estimate of what kind of what severity of pain the child is having. So uh, coming to the pain management, uh, uh, in a paper by uh, Sroji uh, et al., the pain in children has been uh, the assessment of pain in children and non-pharmacological management of the pain has been advised. Uh, non-pharmacological measures com comprise distraction in the form of either passive or an active measure. 
passive mother is when the, uh, a healthcare professional uh, engages the child. Uh, child remains quiet while the healthcare professional is actively distracting the child in the form of singing, talking, or reading a book. And an active an active distraction is done when the child it's, himself is participating in some activities during the process. Uh, the cognitive interventions to minimize pain are uh, when the child is asked to imagine an ima uh, enjoyable item or experience like when he was on a beach or when he was participating in some play, play activity. So this can be a, a distraction. Uh, this can be a base, base of distraction. We can prepare and educate the child about what kind of procedure is going to uh, going to uh, going to uh, deal with and what kind of pain, so that he is prepared for the kind of pain and uh, pain and the procedure. Uh, we can uh, give him coping uh, statements such as uh, "I can do this and this will be over, this procedure will be over soon." Similarly, parental training uh, parental training helps to effect helps to minimize the pain of these children also. Once parents are consoled, so child children are also consoled. Similarly, video games and television can be used to distract children on the painful procedures. The behavioral interventions for, uh, to minimize pain are uh, the child is either taught to concentrate on deep breathing in, um, uh, 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 or by um, uh, giving positive coping behaviors uh, uh, to watch another child or an adult while undergoing that procedure so that child be that this can be uh, handled. The similarly, desensitization, that is step by step procedure to cope up with the painful stimuli. Similarly, uh, positive reinforcements, a child is given a positive remark, positive statement or a concrete gift after each procedure and uh, parental coaching can be done. Uh, behavioral statements, uh, behavioral strategies in units and infants can be a non nutritive setting in the form of pacifier or a non lactating nipple, skin, skin to skin contact with the mother, mother that is kangaroo care, uh, rocking or holding the, holding the infant after any surgical procedure and swaddling the infant that is calming technique. <clears throat> Coming to the drugs, which uh, drugs use uh, drugs use for analgesia, uh, the non opioid drugs are uh, acetaminophen. The doses are twenty milligram per kg per uh, twenty milligram per kg per oral, uh, per oral doses loading dose and fifty milligram per uh, kg dose uh, for every four hourly. However, uh, they're, they're because of uh, if if the dose exceeds more than four grams a day, they can be better toxicity. The NSAIDs can be uh, NSAIDs used are ibuprofen at the dose of 10 mg per kg per oral or parental dose, ketorolac uh, 0.5 mg per kg IM or IV dose, and ketamine uh, at 0.5 to 1 mg per kg IV dose. Uh, higher potency opioids for children are fentanyl, which can be given as, as an infusion of 0.5 up to 4 micrograms per kg per hour, hydromorphone at an infusion rate of 4 micrograms per kg per hour. Meperidine at 1 mg per kg, methadone at 0 0.05 mg per kg IV, and morphine can be given as an oral drug in the form of 0.3 mg per kg per oral or 0.1 mg per kg uh, IV, and the infusion rate is 0 0.02 mg per kg per hour. The problem with uh, morphine is that there is systemic injury and this can lead to articularia pruritus, bronchospasm, and hypotension. So coming to the uh, few concerns about the analysis about some uh, important pediatric procedures that is uh, in case of homophilosy and gastroparesis, uh, the anesthesiologists are concerned about the dehydration because the bowel is exposed, the, there is massive fluid loss the ex because from the exposed viscera and the third space loss, there is heat loss, there is difficult when because of difficulty closure because we will be reducing the bowel contents in a non-formed non abdominal wall which can lead to increase in intra-abdominal pressure. So vent ventilation would be a problem in drop. There is high infusion of prematurity, uh, prematurity along with congenital defects like cardiac defects. So with the concern, we should, so we should try to minimize infection. We should replenish as much fluid as possible and be liberal in giving muscle relaxants, considering hypertension and difficult ventilation. Or tracheostomy fistula, the main concerns are aspiration pneumonia, uh, over distension of the stomach because there is a uh, passage uh, communicating from the tracheal to the esophagus, and inability to ventilate and post-operative intensive care for the anesthetist. Uh, so, the anesthetic paper and awake intubation, they try to catheterize the esophagus. Uh, they avoid massive distension of the stomach by gentle ventilation. Uh, and careful confirmation of the tube position is done by moving the tube uh, millimeter by millimeter. The position must be between the fistula and the tracheal bifurcation. Uh, <clears throat> in preterm infants less than 36, 36 uh, 37 weeks, the risk of um, the risk factors for apnea are uh, the respiratory distress syndrome, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, neonatal dyspnea, necrotizing enterocolitis. Ongoing apnea at a time of surgery, use of narcotics, long acting muscle relaxants, and anemia that is hematocrit less than 30. And coming to a diaphragmatic hernia, the NSDS prefer an awake intubation in diaphragmatic hernia. 
um, they, um, they prefer an intraarterial catheter. They use opioids, avoid hypothermia. They avoid any kind of myocardial depression. Avoid nitric oxide because of which leads to abdominal distension. Um, they are aware of merotrauma because of new uh, merotrauma, which can induce pneumothorax. And they have adequate intravenous access and they plan an adequate post operative care for such patients. Magnetic is not very common in our uh, settings actually, uh, but uh, it is a it is a 